think uh, it seems to be that it was driven by uh, a major R1 university, Stanford University. Um, and that it was that, that kind of constant stream of just bringing in students and that fact that there was a constant stream of talent that was coming in every single year, that then became a matter of how does a community hold on to that talent that's coming through. And in Nashville, it actually um, surpasses the Bay Area in terms of the number of universities. And we're known as the Athens of the South. So the story that I, I do share a lot was um, Dean Terman, the first dean, engineering dean of Stanford University, had two students, um, Paul Packard and uh, David Hewitt, or David Packard and Paul Hewitt. Um, and he had turned to them and said, you need to move out of your garage and actually open up your company on Stanford own land, you know, right down the street from us. And in the sense that you will get talent that comes in every single year, you have a great recruitment platform now be able to ensure your continued growth your company. That uh, lesson really was important for the region because it became this commitment of how does the university you know, break down a potential ivory tower and begin to connect with the community. And so here the uh, the relationship between town and down between all the universities that are here and Nashville as a community has really since I've uh, only been here for two years has really been characterized by a lot of uh, you know, key individuals in different positions across the universities that understand how important it is to introduce their students to what's possible here in Nashville. Um, what I found is a lot of people are kind of drawn. I, I, I'm a native Californian that romanticized New York City. And I've, like, I've gotten at some point in my life, I have to get my ass to New York City because I just need to. And um, I ultimately did that in, within finance. Um, they kicked my ass back. <laughs> I was too relaxed for to live in New York. But it was something that, you know, what I've heard there really from a lot of students here in Nashville is that they want to get to these kind of coastal markets, particularly if they're uh, focused on technology. And part of um, the benefit of having these key people with these different universities, uh, not just research, but across you know, uh, all the different majors and programs that are available in Nashville is that there, a lot of them are starting to have this supporting the message of Nashville is actually the market for the city. And I'll add in that 3.3 million to remind particularly new professionals that uh, you can't pay the rent with stock options in terms of compensation, even if you make it out to one of these coastal markets and you want to go there. And that's really important to then recognize then what does that mean for us here in Nashville. So back in 2013, uh, Mayor Dean created the Office of Innovation, and it's a two-person office. My colleague is focused on uh, innovation as it relates to addressing uh, issues that are vulnerable populations, poverty, affordable housing. A lot of what we're hearing right now through the current mayoral campaign, uh, and different uh, uh, you know, messages that really focus on where is national going to go over the next few years. Um, what I was tasked with by the mayor was entrepreneurship, data, and technology, and how there's a confluence of all of this within our market. And part of that was to focus on uh, you know, a, a general ecosystem approach. And one of the areas that really became evident quite quickly was you know, in, in the Valley, uh, technologists run the show. They have the idea, and they're the ones that get funded. If there's not a credible technologist on, for example, a company's team, it's really almost impossible for that company to get any kind of regardless of whatever phase you're receiving. For folks that have been out in the market, oh, for folks that have been out in the market, I'm glad I see her somewhere. <laughs> 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 uh, but for folks that have been out in the market there before, that they, they've seen, you know, that that's. Uh, that is one dynamic. And here in, in Nashville, what became clear was oftentimes a lot of the business ideas were driving investment, right? It was kind of the idea, and not even necessarily the, the technology talent that happened to be on the founding team that was driving the investment from, you know, from Angel all the way to you know, later series. And that was new to me. I, I hadn't seen that before. Um, you know, part of it was, uh, you know, just, a, I think, a reflection of, um, since I've been in Nashville, what I've learned is that there are new folks that have stepped into different roles, for example, in different universities. And then 
the kind of rise of all these different user groups and how they collaborate across. Um, and then new resources in the community like National's Entrepreneur Center. And how that begins to help building that bridge between business idea and I'll, I'll call them kind of the business entrepreneurs and then now the technology entrepreneurs. And I'd say here in, in Nashville, that is a really great potential growth area. And so for, for all intents and purposes, I saw myself in my role then in the mayor's office as key advocate. You know, I was like, I'm coming with an absolute bias towards technology, and yes, I believe in business ideas, but it's got to be really driven and supported by a lot of experience and perspective on that, the, the technology that's ultimately necessary for a particular business company. And having that kind of starting point as a bias became more about assessing what's our uh, kind of technology platforms that we have. Them. And so the mayor tasked me with fiber platforms. And while I definitely will focus on Google Fiber in government, we are completely neutral. We don't pick winners, we don't pick losers. What we want to do is create the most effective and efficient process for any company that wants to build up something like a fiber platform um, and make it as uh, good a process for them as possible. So with that, I, I do want to open up by saying we are excited that Google Fiber is you know, committed to national, that AT&T is committed its giga power network here to national. Um, there are other big companies that, that are swirling around the national market right now, really recognizing that ultimately at the end of the day, it's just, you know, it's a market to invest in. There is so much that's going on in the national. You can call the it city, and enough people have picked up that that's IT. <laughs> you know, and there's, there's that, that confluence of so much going on in the technology space. Um, so, what we wanted to do, knowing that we wanted to pursue aggressively these opportunities that the companies are pushing out, is okay, as long as we can present a compelling government bureaucracy that they can work with, it's really the community that's going to present the best use cases and the stories around the use cases of fiber platforms. Um, and that's something I just wanted to say earlier because I really hope that we can have a discussion around that of what use cases are you all thinking about as it relates to the fiber platforms that are now being built out of national. Because it, from my perspective, it touches on every single industry. I know we're a music town, I know we're a healthcare town. With these fiber platforms, we are a pure technology from my perspective. It really is just skies of London and let's see these fiber networks all time. So with, with that kind of uh, call to action from the mayor, a lot of that, that effort uh, internally within government too was, okay, let's see on technology platforms, what can government do to partner with the entrepreneurs and the technologists in town? And a lot of it focused on, uh, Joseph, is it cool if I just bring up the, the browser quickly? Yeah, please. Can you tell me what's going on? Two seconds. Excels in creating data sets. We have massive amounts of data within um, our, our different departments. We have over 50 departments in metro government. We're consolidated city county government, which means the kind of traditional health and social services that are often offered by county are now offered by your metro government. The traditional city services, police, parks, um, all of that is also part of uh, our consolidated structure. So acknowledging that we had data that the public might be interested in. What we wanted to do was to begin publishing structured data that was then very friendly to developers to use. So uh, we created an open data portal. Um, some folks have, actually, I'm curious by show of hands, how many have heard of an open data or open data portal uh, kind of initially before? It really is meant to provide uh, ultimately data that is the public's data in a manner that allows you to interact with it. I'm just going to bring up the listing of all the data sets. I think we have over 50 now. 
uh, with arts, uh, all the art in public places. So we have two different data sets, for example, that are focused on all the different art and public art that's available throughout all of Davidson County. And it's all here in this uh, uh, Tiber format. And what data.national.gov allows is for developers to come in and look at it if you're interested. You know, over the period of several years, um, less interns. They physically went to <laughs> all of the art sites and geocoded them. <laughs> so we have latitude longitude coordinates for all of our public art and art pieces here in the Davidson County. So clearly you can see some potential uses for this data set you know, in terms of mapping it out, in terms of walking through all the different possibilities. And um, oops. Thanks, there is our uh, SOD API that allows you to simply copy and paste the API access endpoint so that as new art pieces are added and our interns go out and share them, then you, you don't have to worry uh, about the change in data. That by pulling in this, this um, endpoint, you've basically automated you know, any interaction that a user of your technology, you create an app, for example, or an active website, or whatever you, you create, that you no longer have to worry about the freshness, you know, the, the, uh, how often is that, is that data you know, current. And part of uh, that experiment was really this, this belief that uh, government has to partner with the community. You know, in the past, if we try to do it, uh, has anyone ever gone through a government contracting process? <laughs> uh, one day, there won't be laughs when I ask that question. <laughs> but recognizing that if we as government were to contract out you know, the development of community resources that would have some relevance or you know, potentially uh, pique the interest of our residents or our nonprofits or our business owners, that we would probably take a long time to be able to find developer talent that can even bring this to life. And there's, you know, fundamentally you can see this belief in open source on of this. How do you push out the data sets in a structured manner so that the developers in town can, if they choose, bring to life some incredible resource work? Um, and so this, while uh, uh, you know, it's, it's a start. It's something that that it, it was a culture change for us in Metro. Frankly, you know, it was something that when you talk to different departments, you say, "Hey, are you willing to push out your data?" That's not the first kind of willing step that that government's uh, going to do or take. A lot of it has to do with scrubbing. We do have to be very aware that there might be some um, legally protected data, you know, sensitive data that we don't want to publish. And so. Uh, once we establish all those processes, this is ultimately what we wanted to ensure that our developers and our entrepreneurs in town knew we would turn to government and find that we're going to partner with you along the way. The other uh, kind of initiative that's very current uh, focused on some of the lessons that we have learned uh, you know, as cities in sponsoring and supporting hackathons. 